Hello and welcome to the Sporting Mersey podcast. Joined by me, Lewis, Oscar, Kyle, Jamie, Lucas and Leo. We're going to be talking about a wide range of topics. Um, starting off about um, some of the stories we've been doing on our website. Uh, I'll start off with um, what, what it's just been like to go out and find stories. So for me, it was, it was quite interesting to, you know, go out and do live reporting on a wide range of sports. Um, so it's, it's been really interesting from my point of view. Uh, Oscar, has it been interesting for you? Yeah, it's just been good to like get out and uh, cover different sports that I wouldn't normally be interested in. So, uh, yeah, I've done like other sports other than football. So, yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Uh, Kyle? Uh, yeah, it's nice to sort of go out and go to places that you might not go to necessarily. Uh, just see different places and see different sports, different teams and all stuff like that. Uh, have you two had any struggles finding, uh, found out current sports? Um, we try to get in a press bar sometimes, but <clears throat> when you get that reply from the team, it's, uh, it's a good feeling, like getting a free ticket to sports. Yeah, Jamie, what struggles have you had? Um, well, sometimes you, there's not really much going on. Uh you have to kind of find quite a niche spot or go to watch the uni teams, which has been pretty good, to be fair. Uh, obviously, the uni have a team for pretty much all sports that you can think of, so quite handy. Yeah, it's quite difficult when you've got a niche sport that you don't really know much about. Uh, Lucas, how's it been for you? Yeah, I think I, I speak for everyone when I say... We've really stepped out of our comfort zone covering like different sports that we wouldn't normally like. I covered darts, never really watched darts before, so it gave me a different perspective on like what it's like to be a viewer of different sports like darts, wrestling, and it's just getting yourself out there, stepping out of the comfort zone. Yeah, I've really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, glad to see you enjoy it. Um, Leo, how's it been? Yeah, I've enjoyed it too, in terms of like the different sports, like for example, like rugby, um, covered that to but like different levels from like the top to the bottom of like the, the local like pyramid. So it wasn't something I was interested in, but um once I've taken like a new found liking to it, but you know, I appreciate it a bit more. And um yeah, in terms of struggles, I'd say like getting press passes was I'd say a little bit more challenging than, than could have been, uh, anticipated, but yeah, it's been it's been okay to be fair in terms of I haven't found too many struggles. So oh no, quite enjoyable. Yeah, well I went to women's game, uh, the women's football, and I was uh, surprised by the how how big big the event was considering it's women's because I know men's sports a lot bigger. But it was interesting. I covered the Liverpool versus Everton women's derby uh, at Anfield. And yeah, uh, I really enjoyed going to that. Uh, speaking about women's football, I know Jamie and Lucas, you covered a backgrounder. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, me and Lucas decided to do well, we decided to uh, talk about women's football, and then we chose the topic of the effect of the Women's World Cup, uh, Women's Euro, sorry, last year uh, in 2022. And how much that's affected the popularity in Merseyside. And um, I had the chance to go speak to Ellie Fox, who's the football development officer for the women and girls football for the Liverpool FA. Um, and just saying how, how she thinks that it's had a, a huge impact on the popularity of the sport. Um, and then she told me at the moment that there's uh, 5,425 girls and women uh, involved in. in football at the moment which is a thousand over their target for this year so it just shows how how popular the game is now after that win um she's saying how there's more uh facilities now for girls that like because you well they grow up playing mixed football then it gets to the point where they separate and then a lot of girls drop out. Uh, Luke, I'm sure Luke's will touch on that in a moment. But um, 
yeah, she's saying there's more opportunities for girls to keep playing mixed football, which is uh, good to see. And she said the future is really bright. Yeah, uh, women's football's looking up. And Lucas, he was it Marine you got there? Did you read? Yeah, yeah. So throughout like the process of doing the background, me and Jamie got to interview different types of people. I, I interviewed the Marine women manager Von Parker Sheridan, who basically just shared like her passion for women's football, basically saying how um, she's also a coach at Crosby Stewart, who like coach development session for both girls and boys from the age of six. And she basically said like how she really enjoys watching them develop and watch them develop their love for football, not just women's football, just football in general. And said basically that, in back in like the day, girls used to hit an age of like fifteen or sixteen where they'd have different commitments and then life would just take over. But she's seen a decrease in that and seeing women's football grow as a whole. So yeah, that was really interesting. It was a really interesting opportunity to get to interview someone like that. Yeah, it's interesting you say about other commitments because me and Kyle went to interview uh, some players at Liverpool Feds. And they they were telling us about um careers and jobs that they have, um besides doing football. Uh, how did you think that went, Kyle? Yeah, I think it went well. Uh, it was quite interesting to hear about the sort of struggles growing up, where in a time where not many girls played football, and they'd have to play with boys' teams. They'd be ridiculed about girls shouldn't play football or just being called a boy. Um, seeing how. A lot of women footballers in the lower leagues have to have other jobs to sort of help themselves live and stuff like that. Oscar, were you surprised by any women's sports you covered? Yeah, it wasn't football, but I went to a uh, rugby game. It was um, Sefton against um, St. Helens. And uh, the turnout uh, to be fair, was bigger than like a lot of uh, football games at that level that I've seen. It's probably about 40 people cheering on the ladies. Just good to see. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, Leo, any, any women's sports are surprised? Um, I wouldn't say surprised, but um, I was, um, the quality of the, the WSL match I went to Liverpool and Man City was uh, brilliant. Like, Obviously, I was familiar with like the England setup, how far like the Lionesses have progressed and stuff. But WSL quality was a lot was a lot higher than I could have anticipated, and um, there's a lot of a lot of international players obviously playing the WSL now. It's growing as a league, so that was quite um, it's quite refreshing, I guess. Yeah, well, I spoke about Liverpool versus Everton women's, but I think we'll move on to Everton men now. So they received a ten point deduction. Um, personally, I don't think they deserved it. And we, all you guys, interviewed some Everton fans in a Vox Pop about if they'd stay up. Um, if someone wants to tell us how that went. Lucas? Yeah, so we went out and interviewed loads of like different people, not just Everton fans. Asked them if the 10-point deduction will keep them up or send them down. And we were surprised by how many people said they'd stay up. But looking at it now, after they just beat Chelsea two 0 at home, I think that, I think most of us think now that they're pretty safe. Watching them play, they're not just getting like lucky results like some relegation threatened teams do, but they're playing good football. And I think Sean Dyche has found like the right formula for Everton. And that's just a credit to the fans that they believed since the ten point deduction. That just shows like the true character of Everton fans. Yeah, the team is quite passionate when they win, but also when they lose as well. The the passionate fans. Um, I, I do hope they stay up. Um, I know Jamie, you had some words about the Rocks Pop you did on Everton's relegation survival. Yeah, I mean when we did the Vox Pop, I think it was like. There's only one person that said they'll go down, I think. So, uh, obviously, at the time, I had my doubts because it was looking a bit bleak. But the team's just come together. And I think 
the they have the best manager they can have at the moment. Sean Dyche is, I mean, he's got a good. They've got a good squad now. Uh, he's he knows his eleven. He knows how he knows how to use them properly. Um, the fans are back in the team. There's not a lot of toxicity, like there has been before. And um, I think, well, if they didn't have the the ten points, they'd be mid. They'd be top half of the table, I think. So. Just shows how well they're doing, and I think they'll survive comfort comfortably. To be honest, yeah, uh, I was <clears throat> on the edge of thinking they were they weren't going to survive, but now that the recent form has happened, um, I think they'll just about do it. Uh, moving on to the other side of Liverpool, Kyle, I know you were talking about if Liverpool could be genuine title contenders. Yeah, I mean, still got a lot of season left. Uh, we've seen it before, even with Liverpool, that teams can drop off. We've been top half the or top of the table at Christmas before. I think we ended up third that season, quite far behind. So it can happen, but I mean, from what we've seen so far, we've just seen that they just don't seem to give up, and don't seem to lose, and even when they're playing rubbish, they just seem to be able to pick up three points every time. Yeah, the ability to grind out wins uh, comes from Jurgen Klopp. Uh, I know VAR also has a big say. I know, Oscar, you had some words to say about that. Yeah, well, uh, VAR will have, always have a say in like the relegation battle and the title like charge, I think, because um, it's not consistent enough at the moment. So... There's just uh, every week there's um, say if one thing happens one week it's not going to be the same as next week and it just there's not enough like continuity of the decisions that the referees are making so I think until VAR is fully like until it's like fully like properly fair every week I, I don't think it's uh like right to use in the Premier League yeah and also uh, the automated offside in the Champions League have, have proved to work and I hope in, they'll put them to place in the Premier League but uh, Leo do you think Liverpool could win the league uh, well certainly certainly with a shot I think we'll probably get a clear idea by the new year because in the next four games, I think they've got United, Arsenal, Newcastle. That's all before New Year's Day. They're all big tests. Obviously, they'll have uh, players like Thiago coming back. Um, not not too sure about the extent of like, McAllister's injury, but that's obviously a big um, something they'll need back as well. But I think I think they'll take it to the end, whether they do it or not. I'm not too sure because you've got to be wary of City's you know tendency to have these winning streaks uh, at the end of the season and Arsenal as well. So. I wouldn't, I wouldn't die in hell and say they're going to win the title, but I think they'll take it to the end, like the final day or whatever, as they've done multiple occasions the last few years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, Liverpool fans, they can win it. I think City are going to win it, but, you know. So, finally, we'll end on our favourite story that we covered on our Sport and Mersey website. Uh, I'll start. My, my favourite story... Um, was probably the volleyball, just in terms of the atmosphere, was something that I've I never thought of that could happen in such a niche sport like volleyball. Um, the crowd, both both times that went to watch the female and then the male, uh, was just it was just amazing. <laughs> I've been to some football events and the atmosphere was better at the volleyball. Um, for such a niche sport, I I enjoyed going as much as I did writing about it. Um, Oscar, what, what was your favourite story? It's probably the uh, women's rugby that I mentioned earlier because I went there expecting to be like like 10 people, one of the only people that went. And uh, there was a good like 30, 40 people that turned up and the atmosphere that the, the crowd made was like, better than I expected. So it's uh, good to see the uh, not just uh, women's rugby, but women's sport as a whole growing. 
yeah, especially if uh, rugby is not a particular sport that you're usually into. Uh, Kyle, what about you? I'd probably have to go with the LJMU men's first team basketball game that I went to. It was really nice to see there was so much support from students. It was a really close and entertaining game right to the death. And I might be mistaken, but I think it was the team's first win of the season as well. So, yeah, it's just really nice to see. Especially since basketball's not not really a big sport over here in the UK. So, it's, uh, that's interesting to see the support that they had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jamie, what, what was your favourite story that we did? Um, well, I'm kind of torn between two. Uh, I really like the darts one. Just, I was going into expecting not a lot. But um, it was the peg legs against Mill Lane, and it was top top of the league and bottom of the league. And the quality from peg legs was actually like was really good. As a, and I didn't really know like how darts works, but it was it was uh, interesting to learn. And uh, I'm pretty sure that that dart story is our is our most viewed uh, article by some. <laughs> by some distance, so it shows how there's an interest for like a niche sport like that, which is pretty interesting. Um, the other one was the boxing weigh-ins for Jack Catchwell against Jorge Linares. Um, I enjoyed it because it was like, I mean, there's Eddie Hearn there, there's David Diamante, who's probably the second most popular voice in boxing behind uh, Michael Buffer, and then it was a card full of side talent, so there's a load of support there. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I also covered darts as well. Um, I did Merseyside versus uh, Black Country. Um, it it was a great great event to to be at. Um, it was interesting to see how many fans that darts brings with them. Uh, yeah, Lucas, what was your mind as well? Yeah, uh, I also covered women's as well, and a lot of females were into it. In fact, the one that I went, the females are more vocal than the men, which is quite interesting. Uh, but we'll leave it on to Lucas, your favourite story. Um, I'm torn between a couple as well. Obviously, I like to cover covering the um the live pro wrestling just because I've never really watched it before, so I don't know what to expect. But like, I'd say I was pleasantly surprised, but it was more the different type of like environment that was there different people like completely different environments like a a football game or something like that and it was just interesting to see how passionate some people were about it but the yeah, other one go on. yeah it's different because it's 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 a, a fixed sport but still it's it's an event where it brings people yeah it's it's a strange one because i, I didn't expect it to be that like Big of a thing, but the other one I'd say is the um, I liked covering the boxing. I think that was similar to the wrestling, just a completely different environment. A lot, a lot of passion involved from everyone spectating, and um, yeah, there was actually some high quality showing of boxing there. Yeah, uh, that's good. Um, Leo, what was your favorite story? Uh, yeah, just back on to the theme of basketball, really. Um, I went to the Cheshire Phoenix game. It's a professional basketball, British Basketball League. It's, um, it's a league that's like massively on the rise as well. Like, all well, basketball in this country, it's still, it's still miles behind, you know, other countries, even in, uh, across Europe as well. But um, the crowd was, I think it was 800 around that, which was, it's, I've seen, uh, like, the figures, it's, like, Set off the scale in terms of what it was a few years ago, so that's very encouraging. Um, and as well, uh, Marine Working as well, which was it's like a non league men's football game, it was 4 3. It was really, um, both teams very front footed as well, attacking football. It's quite it's quite a good atmosphere to like get into, especially in the state of like modern football at the moment with a lot of like VR uh, controversy, controversy and stuff. So, yeah, that was. And obviously, Marine, very community club as well. It was quite, um, it's quite easy to get the press pass, and uh, like the dialogue between the club is quite, very on top of that as well. Quite friendly, so that was quite, that was quite a pleasant one as well. 
Yeah, it's also interesting to see like such a, a wide range of of sports that are covered that we, as fans, we wouldn't usually go to, but now as you know, sports journalists, write writing about these sports and engaging with them, it's been really interesting output. Uh, one last thing. Uh, how has it been writing or creating a team website for the first time? Uh, for me, it's it's a good experience. Uh, obviously, in, in the journalism world, uh, websites are a big thing. Um, I know if the thumbnails have been interesting, getting the photos. Uh, Kyle, how's it been for you? Yeah, it's been a nice uh, change from last year on what we covered. I mean, we did do like a match report, but we've done it in a much bigger volume, actually probably, probably publishing it this time, uh, working with each other. Um, yeah, I think it's just good experience for the future and what most of us probably want to do. And Oscar, have you had any, any problems with the website or going out and trying to create a, a report? Well, it's all new experiences for us, like actually publishing things on a website. So, yeah, there's obviously been some, I wouldn't say problems, but like things that we've had to overcome. But um, I think we've smoothed it all out uh, like 10 weeks in and we've got like a good understanding of what goes into making a good website. Yeah, I know, I know Jamie, you were a key part of setting up the website uh, on WordPress. Uh, how was that? Um, well, it took a lot of trial and error to finally get the... Uh layout and stuff working properly but after that it's been pretty smooth sailing I think for everyone like been working together to make sure like it's pretty all the headlines are consistent and you know like doing some like spell checking making sure there's like the main featured image at the bottom and uh, yeah it's been it's been a good experience uh, Lucas how's it been for you? Yeah like everyone that's just said I think it's been really good good like good work especially like building better relationships with each other, working as a team, making sure two of us don't cover the same topic. And um, yeah, just setting up the website and the Twitter handle in general, just promoting the website. It's been really good. Building building our profile, getting more followers. Yeah, it's been been a really good experience. And uh, Leo, how was it uh, getting photos out in sports? taking photos and videos of, of the, the players in action. How was that? Yeah, it was enjoyable, but it was, um, yeah, it was fairly, it's fairly simple. Really. I was quite, um, I was pleasantly, uh, pleasantly surprised with the simplicity of using like WordPress, just how easy it was to like, you know, embed tweets and stuff, which I think they had quite a lot to like the reports and stuff as well. So people have something which like visualizes what you're talking about and stuff. Um, but yeah, obviously the necessity to get your own images, um, obviously. Um, but yeah, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised just how easy it was just to um, produce these match reports on WordPress. It's quite an easy tool to use, off, I think, as well. It's quite, it can be quite detailed and developed once you actually look beyond just the, the simple the simple features of it, really. Yeah, it was also uh, nice to see like, all our work all in one place and um, looking good to click on like getting the right formula of of the dates and stuff like that but um yeah it's been, been an interesting experience and i think as uh, everyone else enjoyed it yeah yeah it's been yeah. great yeah uh, kyle yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah i've enjoyed it as well uh but i think we'll end the podcast there this has been sport in mersey podcast me, Lewis, Oscar, Kyle, Jamie, Lucas, and Leo. Goodbye. See ya. Bye-bye.